Hey everyone, it's been quite some time since my two-part series demolishing every last one of James Tor's ridiculous talking points aimed at discrediting the entire field of origin of life research. But it seems like Jimbo didn't learn his lesson because he's been making a lot of noise on this topic as of late. Let's do a little recap. After my response, James must have been in a pretty dark place because his first move was to sanction this hit piece on me and pay to run it as an ad before my own videos debunking him. It was really pathetic. Of course, it's not running anymore, but lots of people caught it at the time and were quick to inform me of the hilarity. Instead of actually addressing my content and the 50 plus publications I referenced, it just plays footage from a video freely available on my channel explaining my academic and professional background, with cute little sound effects added to imply that not having a doctorate or being a researcher somehow disqualifies me from explaining science. I, I dropped out in my second semester. I wanted to move up to San Francisco and play music. What's that called again? Oh right, ad hominem, the thing he pretends I'm doing when I prove him wrong with facts. And this came along with a desperate ploy for a debate, because that's totally what scientists do. Asking if you would be willing to have, you know, a, a debate. We can do something here at the university. I'll get a lecture hall. I'd love to get together with him. We'll have a live stream. Now, of course, rather than contacting me directly with this idea, he chose to announce it on some loser nobody apologist channel and let it simmer. But even more hilarious is this absolutely transparent good Christian spectacle. James tries so hard to appear like a nice, calm guy, when in actuality he's boiling with rage. But to some who put out YouTube videos, this is very, very simple. How do you just say synthesis? How? Show me. You got a reference on that? Do you have a reference on that? He seems like a fine young man. Oh, the two faces of your typical Christian fundamentalist. But ultimately, this clamor for debate is what creationist preachers do. Science is settled in the primary literature, an avenue James will never, ever take for this topic because he knows he's lying. It's desperate pageantry, grandstanding for his idiot followers who just want him to be right and won't lift a finger to learn enough to understand anything he's saying, let alone find the courage to watch a single second of my content exposing him. Much like this cackling moron from Jim's family famous sermon where he slandered Nobel Prize winner Jack Shostak. Nudged along by dynamic forces in the environment. Huh? <laughs> He's lying to you! You got an RNA nucleotide. But the problem is that's not a nucleotide. It's the wrong structure. This woman is the perfect representation of Tor's acolytes. She doesn't understand a word he's saying, but she loves every last drop. Now, you might think that behind the scenes, James was preparing a stunning rebuttal to my evisceration, biding his time until he was ready to speak again. What was his next move? Wow, look at this, a nine-hour course on abiogenesis. Of course, this is just his pathetic 14-part series all lumped together in one agonizing dumpster fire of a single video. But hilariously, his followers don't notice at all and think it's new content. Here they are claiming James has done it again. You have to love the complete oblivion they display, proving that they don't even watch his content, much less mine. But don't worry, he eventually got around to something new. Wow, what's this piece from October? We've been deceived. Dr. Tour exposes the false science behind origin of life research. Do you think he responds to anything I said to expose his lies? Let's take a peek. This is starting from the very first second of the video. You think you've been taught things that aren't quite right? This whole thing about molecules in a puddle or in a pond, lightning strikes, Molecules form, those molecules form into slithering creatures and they come out of this pond. That's the primordial soup model, that's a bunch of nonsense. Yeah, this moronic straw man is what he chose to open with. He is making it abundantly clear who his audience is. Science illiterate creationist sheep. James previously made nine hours of content pretending to pick apart the RNA world hypothesis as the cornerstone of origin of life research. So why would he open this sermon by insisting that the primordial soup model, which these days is something that pretty much only creationists say, involves molecules in water getting struck by lightning and then creatures slithering out? 
Why would he skip all of the complex chemistry he pretends only he understands and the billion years of prokaryotic evolution and further billion years of eukaryotic unicellular evolution and further quarter billion years of oceanic multicellular evolution and jump straight to slithering land creatures? Because he's a fraud. He is openly declaring that he is not interested in a real scientific conversation. That's why this sermon is being given not in front of scientists or even science students, but a Christian ministry. They're the only people ideologically motivated and willfully ignorant enough to lap up this tripe. Welcome. Uh, Ratio Christi is a Christian ministry here that likes to tackle the big questions of life. Why are we here? Does God exist? Is the Bible true? That's right, the big questions, but only with speakers who tell them the answers they want to hear. Uh, sorry, the lies they want to hear. Well, let's go, James. There's not a single person in the room who knows what you're talking about or how you're lying to them, so the floor is yours. So when people say that Tour uses God of the Gaps arguments or Tour has to bring God into this or Tour has to bring in miracles into this, they're wrong. Whoa, easy, slugger. No one says you explicitly bring up God or religion when you talk about this topic. The point is that you lie about science because of your religion. That's why you only talk in front of ultra-religious people, because they don't know you're lying and pretend that your lies embolden their faith. It's not any different on your channel, as pretty much every positive comment might as well be from the Jesus fan club. But more importantly, whether you admit it or not, you absolutely do imply intelligent design at every turn. Every time you say, molecules never move towards life, or nothing happens spontaneously, you are denying science and clearly invoking a designer, which is the god you believe in. You believe so blindly that you can't even hear yourself talking. But continue. So if, if you think that I am being hard on people, trust me, I am an angel compared to the way that they treat me. Aw, oh, poor James. You lie through your teeth and slander prominent researchers, and then when you get exposed for it, you play the victim card. So there was a, there was a video put out a couple of years ago by Professor Dave, uh, uh, who's a guy named Dave Farina, and that has 786,000 views as of today. And it's, it's, he talks a lot about uh, my motivation for doing these things. I was psychoanalyzed, and uh, um, he knew things about me that I didn't even know about myself at all. <laughs> if you invested in some therapy, you'd stand a shot at realizing that your entire public identity is lying for Jesus. It's easy for me to see through you because I'm not brainwashed. And so I came out with a 13-part series. It's actually 14 parts because this is a, one of the parts is A and B, but say a 13-part series on abiogenesis. Yes, the train wreck I debunked to smithereens. And so then he came out with a two-part series on me again. Now, these have got like almost nine, 800,000 views, 900,000 views. And, uh, and, and again, he says I'm still clueless. So we will address that, not so much tonight, but that will be addressed in due time. Aw, you can't address it tonight? Not even a little bit? Your big superior brain can't refute any of the science I presented, even with over a year to reflect on it? That's a shame. So what are you even doing here? So it's because I have a day job that I can't just run in and, and, and make YouTube videos. And, and this is not easy, because I have to actually read papers and go through the data on the papers. Nobody is asking you to make YouTube videos, buddy. You should publish papers. You know, that thing you brag about doing more than everybody else? No chance of that, though, huh? And do you read the abiogenesis papers? Do you really? Because there are about 50 I showed you in my response, clearly explaining systems chemistry, biogeochemistry, and so many topics you don't understand, which demolish your entire con. But of course, you don't have time for those papers, now do you? But we, he brought in, what was really good is he brought in three experts. And so now I can go after the experts because I'm not going after a YouTuber who it's very hard to engage. It's going like, you know, you put a hook in jello and it comes out. He, 
hook in jello? It sounds like you're trying really hard to pretend you don't have to respond to any of the science I showed you, or acknowledge all the times I caught you quote mining, misrepresenting research, or just saying idiotic things that could be debunked by anyone who got a B in freshman year chemistry. Again, this word spontaneously here is a code word for we have no idea. This is not how soap works as some have claimed. But when that enzyme degrades and proteins do degrade in water, you are desperately deflecting away from me because I show the world how idiotic your script really is. Only two of those people on his, that he brought on knew that they were being brought on. Uh, one of them didn't even know. Nope, that's a lie. All three knew. You're just lying, as usual. It's also a pointless lie, since everything they say proves you wrong either way. Are you going to start saying science things pretty soon? All right, molecules don't care about life. Organisms care about life. Chemistry, on the contrary, is utterly indifferent to life. Without a biological entity acting on them, molecules have never been shown to move toward life. Never. Holy hell, this stuff again? James, what is the point of going up to a podium and pretending you have a leg to stand on when you just ignore the half hour I spent explaining the basics of systems chemistry to you? Remember autocatalysis? The work I showed you by Gerald Joyce? Selection on the molecular level? The physicochemical continuum? You're just going to ignore all of that and stick to your old script, huh? What they do is they purchase some chemicals... Okay, I'm going to stop you here, James. In the first 30 seconds of attempting to discuss the status of this field, you reveal that you will not address anything I said in my several hours of content and will continue to parade around your greatest hits, despite the fact that I've deconstructed every last one. The carefully devised conditions are devised specifically to match presumed prebiotic conditions, and some researchers even do their work in the field, like Dave Deemer's team does in actual hot springs observing nucleotide polymerization. The stereo-scrambled nature of certain synthetic pathways is not a problem given everything I explained to you regarding heterogeneous catalysis, inanious selective crystallization via sublimation, spontaneous deracimization, and the work of researchers like Donna Blackmond, who you so egregiously quote-mined and misrepresented. Pointing at Miller-Urey is a blatant attempt to pretend the field has not progressed in the past 70 years. This claim of hype is just a baseless rejection of science you don't like, and whining about how popular media reports science has nothing to do with the validity of science, nor does a Kent Hovind-style critique of middle school science textbooks that deliberately oversimplify science for the purpose of teaching children. You are a joke. If you're not going to respond to anything I said, why even mention me up top at all? Why pretend that anything you are saying functions as a response to the devastating criticism you receive? Oh right, I know why. Because your clueless audience loves a martyr, and a martyr needs a demon to fight. That's why nobody's ever done it. Nobody's ever made glucose in, 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 uh, uh, with, with, with even relative control of stereochemistry in a prebiotically relevant manner that it is purified from its other material, let alone absolute control where you have to have a homochiral material. Nobody's ever done it. Nobody's ever polymerized glucose. That's how far away we are. Nobody's ever done it in a prebiotically relevant manner. Means that you're not taking human-made design, human protecting groups, deep protecting groups, just what would be er available on an early Earth. James, did you even watch my content? Biologically relevant polysaccharides, like polymers of glucose, are the product of enzyme-promoted polymerization. Enzymes. Your pathetic attempt to discuss synthetic chemistry has nothing to do with origin of life, which I called you out on many times. I explained this so clearly, and you don't even attempt to respond. What's wrong with my explanation? Address it. Also, do you even know what homochiral means? A small molecule like a sugar or amino acid can't be homochiral. We call them enantiomerically pure. Homochiral refers to a polymer that is made of enantiomerically pure monomers. How do you expect anyone educated to take you seriously when you don't even understand the words you are using? It's pointless to go through the rest of this hour-long sermon, because apart from a lengthy attack on Stephen Benner, which I suspect Dr. Benner will address on his own, all James does is repeat the things I already debunked. My two-part series serves as a debunk of this, just as it does his previous content. But there are some very telling statements at the end of this sermon in the Q&A portion. 
Okay, so the question that came in from the internet is, is that, uh, uh, do, I, do I think that the work being done is, 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 is not worth being done, or, or should we just keep, keep doing it? And, and what do I propose that we do? I think that the way we're doing it is so wrong, it's just gotta stop, radically stop. It's getting us nowhere. And I say we have something akin to a DARPA challenge. What DARPA does is when they have it, the, the community is stuck on solving something. So they have DARPA challenge. They don't invite in any of the old guys who've been working on this for 40 years. They want young, fresh minds on this, and you can't do anything that's the same as what been done and give us some fresh proposals. That's what we need. Because what I say is all of the origin of life researchers that are working today will die of old age before they solve this problem. And their students will die of old age before they solve this problem. Because I know that we're nowhere close if we keep going down the same way. So I think that there's no use in continuing the same work. We need some totally fresh ideas that are, that are much different than what we're doing today. That's right. All origin of life research should stop. Hey, you, thousands of researchers doing incredible work all over the world. You need to stop right now and switch careers because you're bothering James. And who should this new team be, pray tell? James at the helm, surrounded by all his Discovery Institute cronies and fraudulence? You're a lunatic. But he goes further. Any other researcher that goes on this Dave Farina's program, I'm going right after them. I'm going to expose their work. Whoever goes on his channel, their work will be exposed. There is no better demonstration that James is anti-science on this topic. Anyone who comes to my channel, no matter what they say, no matter how well established their science is, and no matter what their purpose for communicating it to me, they will be exposed. Exposed for what? This is a baseless presumption that no origin of life researcher would ever do any legitimate science. There is no possible statement James could make that could more clearly demonstrate his fundamental ideological opposition to the field of origin of life research and the concept of abiogenesis in general. And it's right out of his own dumb mouth for all to hear. But this is his new identity. He's a fully realized apologist. All of his content is like this now. He's either literally preaching about sinning and Jesus. But God gets right at my heart. And so he immediately had my attention. I remember saying to him that if that's the definition of sin, then I'm a sinner. Or aggressively attacking the entire scientific community, calling them cowards for not standing up for his God. There are plenty of academics that have the intellectual chops of C.S. Lewis and Dietrich Bonhoeffer, but they have not the impact because they're cowards. It's yeah. because what we see in the academy is that the, the, you see that we're utter cowards. They will not speak up about the Lord. They will not take a, a defensive position to defend the faith. Sure, James, it's scientists who aren't liars for Jesus that are the problem. Totally. Scientists really need to spend more time making videos praising the Lord and denouncing science that doesn't fit the scriptures. Do you not hear how insane you sound? Anyway, all of his content is now either tired creationist tropes or rambling in irrelevant chemistry speak to his hand-picked audience of science illiterate Christians who just sit there dumbfounded and nod their heads, remarking as to how correct the smart Jesus molecule man must be. These mindless crowds embolden him, which leads to his latest tirade, published very recently. Hooray, more highly stylized science denial. Oh no, my experts are going to be debunked. My experts, as though they are sitting in a stable out in my backyard, and also as though there aren't hundreds of others you pretend don't exist. By all means, James, don't waste one second addressing the mountain of science I explained to prove you wrong. Ignore all the publications I show demonstrating science you pretend doesn't exist. If I don't have a doctorate, none of the science I reference is real, right? I must have made it up. This is a pathetic tactic that will only work on his followers because they have no clue what's in my content. He tells them that it's just me interviewing three scientists, so that's all he needs to address. I also love how he puts experts in quotation marks as though Lee Cronin and Stephen Benner aren't experts in origin of life research, while he is, even though he doesn't work in the field at all and doesn't understand it. The hubris is astronomical. So let's see what this series is going to be about, shall we? 
Why am I so motivated to speak up against this? It's because somebody pushed me. I was just minding my own business. Not anymore. No, James, you weren't minding your own business. You were flapping your lip and lying about science all over the internet. That's how I heard about you and decided to debunk your lies. But keep pretending you're Bruce Willis and die hard, I guess. It is clear that his religious views cloud his capacity to interpret research on this topic. Uh, yeah. I am perfectly situated to be commenting on this. You could be, but you just lie about it, remember? I should know. I'm an organic chemist, so I know the most about this. That's me doing an impression of you, James. That's what you say. Got any more underhanded misrepresentations up your sleeve? I hate them so much. I really <laughs> want to just humiliate them. Well, that was me talking about all your handlers at the Discovery Institute, and I certainly have been humiliating them, as I'm sure you've noticed. They want to attack me as an individual because they cannot address the science. Well, I did, actually, for two and a half hours, citing 50-plus publications that prove you wrong. Did you want to get around to addressing some science? Undeniable. He's actively lying. Again, uh, yeah. I don't know what Dave Fariner's expertise is, but it is certainly not chemistry. Okay, hang on, James. What is all of this? I mean, I know what it is, but what is it doing in your video? This is a picture of me from when I was shooting a video at YouTube Studios as part of the Next Up program in 2016, where we got a chance to shoot in an Oval Office set, and I wrote a little piece pretending to be president, and I'm friends with an alien. Is that relevant to your position on origin of life research? This is a picture of me wearing an Italy shirt and making a playful Italian gesticulation because I'm Italian. Is that relevant to your position? You complain that you being Christian isn't relevant, even though it totally is, but me being Italian is somehow important to you? And this, James, these are snippets from a music video for a song I wrote called Tannhauser Gate, which is an ode to one of my favorite movies, Blade Runner, in which I play all the characters in the movie. This part is me playing both Leon and Deckard. This part is me playing Roy Batty. It's actually a super dope song and video that I would really like everyone to check out on my music channel, Simulated Sun. Here's what those two sections actually sound like. So does me being a musician somehow invalidate the science I'm explaining? Or did you hunt for a clip of me being intense and dramatic in a music video and use it out of context as an attempt at character assassination? Why is any of this in your video, James? When you desperately try to play the role of mild-mannered Christian and then turn right around and act like a mud-slinging senator, that's called hypocrisy, and it's sad that your followers are too stupid to recognize it. She brought in three experts. I'm going right after them. We'll just take them down one by one. Again, James, they aren't my experts, and you have a lot more than three people to worry about. It's the entire field of origin of life research that proves how clueless you are every day. I'm just the one communicating their work to the public to neutralize your egregious misrepresentation. Anything else? So, James, I'll leave you with this. You have a choice. You can be a scientist, or you can be a preacher. And we all know what you've chosen. Preacher. Now, of course, I'm flattered and quite gracious to be living rent-free in your head every day. Honestly, I do kind of enjoy imagining you and your loser colleagues at the DI sitting around with your heads in your hands trying to come up with a way to shut me up. But unfortunately for you, it ain't gonna happen, and every lie out of your mouth just makes it worse. If you had a leg to stand on, you wouldn't need action movie soundtracks. You could just talk like a normal person. You wouldn't need a desperate attempt at character assassination by showing totally unrelated clips of me from my music videos. You could just try to answer the irrefutable points I make. And most of all, are you listening, James? 
Most of all, if you had a leg to stand on, you would publish your critiques, not in inference review, but in a reputable peer-reviewed journal, like the scientist you pretend to be, instead of reducing yourself to a Kent Hovind-level creationist troll. I'd love to get together with him. We'll have a live stream. Anytime, anywhere. Come down to Dinosaur Adventure and you can sit right here beside me on my channel and we'll have a debate. So keep it up, James. Keep on lying and I'll keep exposing you. With every video, you dig yourself deeper and deeper into this pit of science denial you've built around yourself. And with every outburst, you become more and more the laughing stock of the scientific community. And James is not just a joke to scientists, either. He's a joke to the entire Rice University campus. Take a look at this entry in a satirical publication made by Rice undergrads advertising office hours for Dr. Tour. I will purify you chemically and spiritually. The itinerary lists prayer, a lecture about how Earth is not a sphere, more prayer, still more prayer, and then just a smidge of exam review. And look, the first 25 to show up get a free Bible. This brings a smile to my face, as I imagine the poor undergrads that actually have to take a class from this guy, snickering in the back as James tries his hardest not to infuse any religion into his chemistry lectures. The whole world is laughing at you, James, except, of course, for the handful of idiots delusional enough to think you're on a mission from God. So by all means, Jimbo, you and your team of editors at the DI keep on setting them up, and I'll keep knocking them down. It's quite entertaining and educational for everyone to watch, and by everyone, I mean all those who actually watch my content, to see just how hateful, clueless, and dishonest you really are. Toodles!